a top of the a top of the hour to you good morning i am neelima mehra aap ki host aap ki dost welcome to this edition of women's world view this very first edition of women's world view in this beautiful flowery month of may 2014 women's world view is a proud presentation of gtv our production today includes women and globalization the world of music immigration updates and real estate today we have a full show in store so let's get going but first a quick break for our generous underwriters welcome back and welcome to women and globalization the host here is dr satish misra whose guest is a practicing immigration attorney in the dc metro area this attorney's good name is attorney purnima mukim let's get to know her a little closer namaskar This is Dr. Satish Mishra. Welcome to Women and Globalization segment of Women's World View. We are very happy today that we have a famous, well-known, well-seen face, Mrs. Purnima Mukim. Namaskar. She is an attorney, especially focuses on immigration. And welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and uh, there are a couple of things before we get into the. a real topic of discussion today about uh, spouses coming from india and think like that okay. uh, i want to tell you that women and globalization focuses on how globalization has impacted a woman's yes. life okay. whether it, it has broadened their uh, prospects and think like that and uh, it does world has become smaller it has it is shrinking day by day due to technology technological right. advances I due agree. to communication due to transportation everything has become very small as compared to what we did so many right. years ago so uh, here our focus is uh, globalization i also see that so many kids from here going back to india finding a spouse there right. and when they want to come back here they face a problem of is power visa whether it is a man or a woman right. and there are some things that our audience would like to know what kind of visas are available and what the strategy should be so first welcome to this show again thanks and for it's a pleasure me. to have you it's a very important topic that i we talk about in social parties right. social affairs right so uh, you, your views on that okay uh, before we get into that mm-hmm. tell us our audience a little bit about yourself okay Uh, my name is Purnima Mukim and I practice immigration law. I have been practicing here in this area for about 20 years now and my specialization is immigration and uh, within immigration I specialize in issues involving women and uh, how they have progressed and how they are treated and in some cases how they are mistreated. So I have a special interest in wow, those issues. Wow. So how they are mistreated? Okay, mistreated. <laughs> how like it can take forever to describe how they are mistreated um, but again we do come up uh, with a lot of cases involving like domestic violence uh, in which even the uh, most educated women they come from india uh, they marry uh, us citizens or green card holders and uh, come here on a green card uh, but because they are not that familiar with the american culture uh, they are mistreated and um, Uh, they are not given their rights and they don't know where to go and what to do about it mm-hmm. uh, also like it is unfortunate that in india a lot of abuse is accepted part of the life for people so yeah. they don't even know that they have recourses and uh, th- there is really something meaningful meaningful they can do to address this but i would like to assure the people in the community that like this is america this is 21st century uh, women are equal if not better part <laughs> of the community yeah. Yeah. so they definitely are better yes. part this is yes. what i would like to yes mention yes. and then mistreatment means abuse right yes abuse is kind of a um, legal term and uh, you cannot define abuse for one for one person like even if the husband beats up the wife they may think that okay this part of normal life is my 
issue right. also what That's he different. did it um, yeah. for marital um, harmony they would just accept it as part of life and then there may be some instances in which the husband says hey why are you sitting here get up that may be abused like how dare you say That's that right. to me so you're talking about uh, just many kind of abuse, physical yes. abuse yes mental abuse yes verbal abuse yes then compromise this yes. Fourth, compromise. Am I better off with this person or not? Correct. And that's the question everybody asks. Yes. Everybody seeks. Yes. Whether I'm better off with this person? Yes, and that's the right way it's to go because you cannot just like because uh, there is any kind of like recourse available, then you just like jump to it that okay, I will divorce you. You said this to me, or I will complain to the police just because we had an argument. So you really have to think about. Um, all these issues, what is good for you, what is not good for you, how, how can you change it without going to the extreme? That's a very important point you are bringing up, that any time you see any kind of domestic uh, dispute, violence, or whatever term you want to use, yes. think about that particular situation yes. and come to a conclusion that is better for both people and for the family, entire family, yes. and extended family beyond yes. the immediate family. Definitely. So that's that sort of compromise. Like, yes, you know, like yes compromise is always good. Uh, yeah. Like having the law and like not putting up with abuse doesn't mean that don't compromise. Yeah, and if the situation reaches beyond compromise, yes. like uh, you know, mindset or whatever you want to call it, Yes. Then what are the alternatives available? Yes, I, I would say that abuse starts when it goes beyond the point when you, you are willing to compromise. Uh -huh. So sometimes like you have an argument with each other and it might be a heated argument and you leave the room and go to another room. Um, technically it may be abuse, but like yeah. uh, so again so it is a fact a specific thing. Yes. If it goes beyond compromise, beyond say they go to counselor, then if that doesn't work, Yes. Then they take, they seek legal help or something yes. like that. Yes. Now our main point was to talk about uh, these guys and girls going back to third world outside of USA, okay. getting married, mm -hmm. and are even uh, engaged, are mm -hmm. even you know they have option of fiance visa yes. versus marriage visa. And I would like you to tell our audience. Mm -hmm. What are the good points and bad points in both fiance visa and you know getting visa, you know, regular visa? Okay, I guess everybody uh, in this country has already come uh, here by immigration. Generally, the Indian and South yeah. Asian community I'm talking about, yeah. so they already have uh, quite a bit of idea about how the marriage visa works. So when people here who are either U.S. citizens or green card holders, they go back to their home country to get married. Generally, they file, they get married there, they come back, they file an I-130 petition, and based upon the marriage, the immigration and the Department of State, um, they scrutinize the application, verify all the facts that have been stated there are correct, and based upon that, they issue permanent resident to the spouse uh, to come here and settle here as a permanent resident and then there are which we call a green card and then there are steps after a certain amount of years they can acquire US citizenship. So this is this is a you know, regular visa. That regular is the general uh, law. Yes. Permanent resident visa yes. that you get married there you get a certificate of marriage right. from, from the court or from the page? Yes when you uh, get married in India yeah. uh, you have to get a marriage certificate from the government of India. They are marriage registrars are there they will take down your particulars and register a marriage and give you a certificate that yes, the these two people are. They got married. Yes, they, they will specify yeah. uh, the name, parentage, heritage, um, the addresses that these two people were married on this day. Oh, that, that's good. That's good to know that there is another process besides getting married. The ceremonial the marriage, yes. You have to follow the next step to get it registered in the court right. and get that wedding certificate. Yes. And what about the name change? Name change process? That name change, the law in USA right now is that if uh, generally only the wife changes the name. Only uh, wife changes the yes. name. Yes. That's right. So the law accepts that uh, if you, if your old educational certificates, birth certificate, they are in your maiden name. Uh, uh -huh. But 
you do not have to formally change the name when you file your paperwork, you can acquire the husband's name and uh, marriage certificate is the proof of name change uh, legally. You do not have to do anything you additionally. You do not have to fo uh, uh, follow another step or another process, another procedure. Yes, unless you want to, you have a choice. Okay, that's good. You can that, do that, that but know. you do not really have that, to. That is good to know that you can continue to keep a maiden name. Yes. And your husband's name, uh, whatever, yes. legally, but still you do not have to use that husband's last name. Yes, that is not a requirement. You can still keep your yeah. maiden name. Now, a little bit about fiancé visa. Okay. The so fiancé visa, what happened was that uh, because a lot of people from all over the world were immigrating to the U.S. and uh, the immigration department had limited resources. Mm -hmm. So, it was taking a lot of time to process those I-130 applications and then sometimes people what had to… What are I-130? Fiancé visa as well as… No, I-130 is the regular marriage visa. Okay. Uh, yeah, once you are married already in your uh, home country, uh, then you file the I-130 petition, that is a form I-130 okay. of the immigration. Okay, what about fiancé visa? Uh, yeah, I will talk about the fiancé okay. visa. Let, First, like the regular way, why the fiancé visa even came into being. Okay, fine. Yeah. So, because the regular petitions were taking like a long time, sometimes it used to take years for people to get their um, spouses mm -hmm. and which is not acceptable. So, what they did was that for U.S. citizens, they made a provision that if you have met the person uh, who you intend to get married, there are some requirements that you should have met that person within the last two years. Mm -hmm. So, if you know that person and you both have agreed that you want to get married and the U.S. citizen cannot travel to the home country for business or job related reasons, whatever reasons, you do yeah. not have to specify those. Then you can invite that person on a fiancé visa and that uh, fiancé visa is granted to the person for um, 90 days. They have to come here uh, and get married to that applicant within 90 days and then apply for the green card and all so the processing here. One thing that person cannot go back to the country of the spouse. Yes. Because of the, whatever it is busy or uh, he is not allowed to travel or whatever that yes. is. Then yes. Then only because if you can travel, then why do not get married there? That's right. So that, that's true. Yeah. Yes. And but again, there is a twist to that too. Uh, so, in your opinion, what is the better, fiancé visa or regular visa? Okay. About fiancé visa, let me clarify just a little bit more. Yeah. There are two kind of fiancé visas. One is like the fiancé visa regular, another is called K2 visa. What happens is that some sometimes like the people wanted to get married and for whatever reason they did not apply for a fiancé visa. Mm. So, in the meantime they decided to go back and get married. Now, they got married there, they came back, but still the I-130 is taking very long to be mm. processed. So, even when you are married um, in your home country, they started another uh, fiancé visa, it is still called a fiancé visa that you can get the petition expedited for your spouse to come here and then do the green card processing mm -hmm. here. So, I wanted to clarify the no, two good, different kind good. of so fiancé visas. That and yes. uh, uh, so, you will say that uh, first choice is permanent visa. Yes. Second choice is fiancé visa and fiancé visa has two type of things. So, that is your last message to our audience? Uh, yes, I would say that uh, I personally prefer the regular visa more, but it is very fact specific if sometimes you really cannot go back to your country to get married. Uh, and like when you want to get married, you want your whole family to go for whatever reasons the yeah. logistics do not work out, then fiancé visa is a good option. But again, you have to know that there are certain rules that apply to that. Yeah. You should have met that person within the last two years mm -hmm. and that person can come here only for the purpose of getting married. Once they come here and they decide, oh, who cares about this, let me just find a job, you cannot do that. Well, thank you, Purnimaji. Thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, very educational for our audience and you learned something. And uh, if you have questions, you can contact us anytime. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Namaste. Nice to meet you. 
Moving right along places us into the world of music, which is a presentation of...